Good morning, my dear students. I hope all of you are doing well. Welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Salah Shaheen, Professor of General Surgery, Kasselaini Hospital, Cairo University, Egypt. I am going to present a video series covering the practical course. assigned for students who are studying general surgery at Faculty of Dentistry, MTI University. Today, I am going to start by a video on wounds. A wound is defined as a break in the continuity of the surface epithelium. Wound types can be cut wounds, typically as surgical incisions. Wounds may be lacerated. And there are other types like contusions, hematoma, ecchymosis, puncture wounds, etc. Let's start by the incised wound. It is also known as clean cut wound or tidy wound. It is caused by sharp objects like a knife, sharp metal or broken glass. The wound is often linear but can be jagged and irregular, for example, if caused by a broken glass. Edges are clearly cut and sharp usually longer than deeper. There is no adjacent bruises of the skin edges. Usually bleeds freely and the bleeding can be heavy if vessels are involved. If there is associated injury of vessels, tendons or nerves, they can be repaired primarily if presented within 6 to 8 hours from injury. No need to give antibiotics. Next is lacerated wound, which is also known as contused wound or untidy wound. It is caused by crushing forces or plant objects. Wound is irregular but can also be linear. It is oftenly gapping. There is contusion of the surrounding area. In the depth of the wound, the nerves and vessels may be stretched and torn rather than cleanly divided. Mostly, there is gross contamination with dust and foreign bodies, so needs antibiotics. There is relatively little bleeding as the vessels are crushed, unless on the scan or intraorally. It is important to know how the wounds heal and what are the types of wound healing. The wound can be either healed by primary intention or by secondary intention. Healing by primary intention occurs in clean wounds when closed immediately by sutures or any other means like steeples. There is minimal fibrosis, leading to a nice neat scar which is linear, flat with the surface, has the same color match with surrounding with no stitch marks. While healing by secondary intention occurs when the wound edges cannot be approximated due to the presence of devitalized tissues, infection or skin loss. The healing occurs slowly by granulation tissue, resulting in more fibrous tissue, 
and ends in an unsightly or ugly scar, which is broad, not flat with the surface, pigmented or depigmented, with stitch marks, as shown in the picture. Factors affecting wound healing are categorized as general factors and local factors. All of them delay wound healing. The general factors are age, healing is slow in elderly persons. Good nutritional status is essential for proper healing, anemia, hypoproteinemia, vitamin A, C, D deficiencies all delay the wound healing. Depilitating general disease like uremia, cirrhosis, diabetes mellitus, and malignancy, as well as drug intake, such as corticosteroids, chemotherapy, all have negative effect on wound healing. The local factors are wound infection, arterial insufficiency, the face and scalp have rich blood supply. In contrast, there is a poor blood supply below the knee level. Radiotherapy causes local end arthritis of the terrains, leading to ischemia and poor healing of wounds. Another factor is venous insufficiency that leads to edema of the part and delays wound healing. The presence of foreign body or necrotic tissue prevents healing. There are a lot of wound factors that impair healing, like hematoma, tension on the suture line, faulty wound closure, and lack of rest of the sutured area. Fixation to the underlying bone prevents wound contraction, which is essential for proper healing. Complications of wound healing are Number one, wound infection or incisional surgical site infection. Number two, wound dehiscence or gapping. In abdominal wounds, this may cause burst abdomen or later incisional hernia. Number three, hypertrophic scar, which is tender, red, and raised, but remains within the confines of the wound. Number four, keloid formation or excessive scar tissue, which is very itchy, raised, and extends beyond the confines of the original wound. In other words, overhanging. Number five, contracture, which is shortening of the scar tissue. This is different from contraction of a muscle. If overlying a joint, it leads to deformity. The last complication is malignant transformation of a chronic wound due to prolonged irritation. It is called marjoline ulcer. Treatment of wounds include the following steps. Follow priorities of the management of injured patient a, B, C, D, E sequence. That is A for airway, B for breathing, and C for circulation. Stop the bleeding and refer to the hemorrhage video. Prophylaxis against tetanus. Antibiotics are indicated in potentially contaminated wounds, like punctured or lacerated wounds, also for cut wounds presenting after 6 hours. In operating theater, perform the following. Sterilize the wound and the surrounding skin by an antiseptic solution like bovidone iodine solution. Thorough cleaning of the wound by saline and meticulous removal of the foreign bodies and dead tissue are done. Explore the wound to assess the extent of the damage. Extension of the wound may be needed to allow complete exploration. The definitive treatment of the wounds depends upon the type of wound, time of presentation, possibility of sepsis, and the presence of associated nerve, vessel, or skeletal injuries. Incised wounds are for primary closure if done within 6 hours of injury. Damaged nerves, vessels, and tendons should be repaired primarily. 
for lacerated wounds, wound excision with primary closure if done within six hours of injury. If presented after the bridement is done and the wound is left open to be repaired after a few days by delayed primary closure. Nerve or tendon repair is better to be deferred. In case of gross contamination, wounds are left open, treated with regular dressing and antibiotics for two to three weeks until become clear. Closure of the wound at this stage is by secondary suture. The skin loss is treated by a skin graft or flab when the wound becomes clear. I think by the end of this lesson, you will be able to answer any question in the practical exam at the end of this term. If you are satisfied by this video, please give a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Your subscription to my channel helps me to make much more videos. Don't forget to hit the bell so you will be notified once I post a new video in my channel. Thank you for watching my channel and see you soon. Good luck.